Hi everyone, here's the Book Chemist once again. Many of the books that I love tend to walk the line between realism and the supernatural. They often feature ghosts or monsters or anyway intrusions of other worlds into our own, but no matter how heavy-ended they are with these supernatural elements, they often tend to leave their mysteries unsolved rather than explaining them neatly away. On a purely narrative level, I feel that the these uncertainty sustains the narrative beautifully. Many of these uh, stories of the supernatural and the, and the weird tend to lose steam once the beauty of this mystery and the ambiguity of it is simply reduced to a monster on the loose or a haunted house or any other um, readily identifiable phenomenon. But I also find that this state of uncertainty, these basic uh, ignorance when it comes to the to this phenomenon speaks very closely to me about my own experiences with reality and with the world when I think about the way I uh, understand the actions of governments or the flow of human history uh, the laws that regulate human behavior uh, the very philosophical questions that underlie existence, I feel like I often can maybe just about grasp some kind of massive, sometimes monstrous shape behind all of these things without ever really being able to identify it or, or to fully grasp it. And I feel like the uncertainty of these narratives really speaks closely to this this state of almost but not quite understanding that I'm familiar with. Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield, her debut novel, is another book that walks that same line between realism and fantasy, and often wanders fairly deep into either field without ever losing its balance. Uh, and this is largely down to how wonderfully paced the novel is, how careful Armfield is at uh, handling the double narrative, the two narrative strands that compose the novel, revealing just enough of each strand at a given time, in a given chapter, to keep this balance alive. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the novel is so good at maintaining this split commitment, because it is very much a split narrative, split between the land and the sea. Uh, it's a novel that reminds us time and again in many different ways how closely bonded we are to the sea, no matter how far away from it we live and no matter how little we think about it. The sea and the ocean in the novel are not just a metaphor for the subconscious or for for atavistic impulses, or for death, or for whatever else. They are all of these things at various points, but the sea is also the sea as a physical phenomenon, as a, as a place. A place full of movement, full of unseen life, and full of strange creatures. The text Passion for the Sea, the almost geeky, almost nerdy, uh, enthusiasm that, that, that shines through the novel for the mysteries of the sea, for the wondrous creatures that inhabit it, is really contagious and it feels very much like reading Moby Dick. Uh, all those pages, all those chapters about whales are not just about draft, drawing some kind of cute metaphor uh, between the white whale and human ambition or whatnot. They are very much Melville inviting the reader to marvel at all the wondrous things that he's talking about. And that same type of encouragement, that same type of contagious enthusiasm, really shines through our wives under the sea. The novel focuses on the difficult reunion between the two protagonists after one of them comes back from a, a botched mission to the bottom of the ocean. And it allows, the, the, this plot, this basic concept, allows the text to talk at length about many moments of crisis that most of us, if not all of us, will have encountered or will encounter at one point in the future. Uh, it allows the text to talk about relationships turning sour, uh, to talk about loss, to talk about coping and, and getting to grips with the limits of your own empathy and understanding, with your own limitations and failings as a human being. 
Our Wives Under the Sea is also a beautiful novel about friendship, about the self-sabotaging tendencies some of us have, uh, the way we have of focusing on the negative sides of our friendships instead of treasuring the very simple and very rare fact of, of human connection. Uh, this side of the novel, uh, the side that deals with Miri's relationship with her friend Carmen, reminded me a lot of uh, Otessa Moshfeg's My Year of Rest and Relaxation, where similar dynamics are explored, except I found Armfield's treatment of that much more subtle and much more relatable and interesting. The truth is that I find it incredibly difficult to talk about Our Wives Under the Sea without gushing. I found this to be, if I have to be honest, a perfect novel on a page-by-page -page level. I found incredible nourishment in many of its reflections and its plot of strange metamorphoses and underwater encounters is exactly the kind of stuff that sets my pulse racing. As somebody with a lifelong obsession for H.P. Lovecraft's sea stories, uh, Dagon Cthulhu in Smooth, uh, I found that this book um, ignited a whole web of connections between those stories and its own plot and it made me look at those stories under its own light in the same way as I read this novel uh, under the light of those stories. Our Wives Under the Sea opens with two epigraphs, one from Moby Dick and one from Joe's, and I think that that tells you everything you need to know about the book. This is a novel that draws from the best sides of both of those two texts. It features the same insightful reflections on human existence, human psychology and interactions that you find in Moby Dick. It features the same feeling of fear and, and mystery and, and uh, suspense before the, the forces of nature that you find in Joe's. It features the same love of the sea uh, and, and love and terror and awe and all these contradictory feelings that you find in both texts and turns them, turns all of these things into something new, original and, and truly stunning. It's a fantastic novel. You have to read it. Thank you for watching as always and bye everybody.